remembering a fallen officer. We're live in Henry County where family, friends, colleagues, and the community are holding a prayer vigil. Plus. It was like I instantly started crying. A rush of just happiness. Like I was speechless. And plus, we were there as GBI brought a missing one-year-old out of the DeKalb County home and let you know as soon as the boy was found safe. Now, what his mother is saying about his happy return. Live, local, link breaking. This is Channel 2 Action News at Noon. Coverage you can count on. Good afternoon and welcome to Town Action News at noon on your Friday. I'm Fred Blankenship. Happy now. The Henry County Police Department is holding a prayer vigil for fallen officer Paramhans Desai. Now, he was responding to a domestic violence call last week when he was shot. And the community is mourning the sudden and violent loss. And they planted hundreds of blue flags to honor Officer Desai. Many of the flags were placed around the officer's home. Now some in the community have also installed blue porch lights as well. Neighbors told Channel 2 he won't be forgotten in any way. Officer Desai was responding to a domestic situation involving a man named Jordan Jackson. Now, police say Jackson shot the officer and then took off. Officer Desai was taken to a hospital but died a few days later. Multiple agencies tracked Jackson to an apartment complex in Riverdale in Clayton County. They say he shot himself before they could capture him. Officer Desai's death is impacting his entire community, and today they have come together to pray and remember him. And Channel 2's Christian Jennings is live right now at Henry County Police Headquarters in McDonough. Christian, where the vigil is getting underway now. That's right, we expect it to start any minute now. People are still showing up, and this community is in mourning. As you said, absolutely, you can see that uh, people are here to pray for Officer Desai's family, his law enforcement family, and of course to grieve this great loss of a great man, a great father, a husband, and a veteran police officer. There are several pastors, church leaders set to speak here today, and everyone in attendance received a flower uh, that will be later placed on Officer Desai's uh, patrol unit behind me. I got one in my hand as well, and you can see just how this memorial has grown over the past few days, flower after flower. There's handwritten letters, all sorts of things, ways that people are paying their respects to this man. And you can see that uh, plenty of law enforcement officers are gathered. And we'll wrap this up so that things can get underway. And we will be here and also be able to bring you the latest starting on Channel 2 Action News at 4. Reporting live in Henry County, Christian Jennings, Channel 2 Action News. Christian, you wrapped it up right there. You People are remembering him as a, as a hero and, and somebody they definitely want to pay their respects to. Thank you very much. And deputies arrested two women accused of hiding Jordan Jackson after he killed Officer Desai. Sheriff Reginald Scandred said he was disgusted by one woman's comments during the booking process. F the pigs, F the officer, F his kids, and F all of you all. And the sheriff announced that Madison Troy faces charges for helping someone hide from custody and trying to prevent their arrest. Caitlin Finley faces charges of hindering apprehension and possession of a controlled substance. We're also remembering Jackson County Deputy Lena Marshall as well. She was responding to a domestic violence call on Friday when a woman shot and killed her. Another deputy killed the suspect. A funeral for Deputy Marshall's plan for Monday at Free Chapel Church's Brazelton campus. That's at 2 p.m. And law enforcement will meet at the Jackson County Sheriff's Office to travel to the church. Well, developing this afternoon, questions over the once missing one-year-old found safe and now back in his mother's arms. Glad to tell you that. His family says a car thief kidnapped little Blaze Barnett early Wednesday morning when they took the family's SUV you see right there. Now, the family says he was gone in seconds from their apartment on Montreal Road in Clarkston. The boy's mother and father were unloading groceries. The car was found abandoned nearby, but Blaze was gone. Then, more than a day after... He was taken. A woman found Blaze wrapped in the back seat of her car. We brought you the breaking news during Channel 2 Action News at 4, 5, and 6 when Blaze and his mother were reunited. You see him being carried right there. Now, Deanna Bray, with her son Blaze in her lap, shares the moment she got the call. He was like, We got him. And when he said that, I was like, You got him. And everybody was just like, screaming and I was like oh my god okay and I started crying I just knew like now I know my baby's safe ah 
Can you imagine the joy there? Blaze now did get a checkup at the hospital and appears to be doing well. His mom says finding him was a prayer answered. I think a lot of us feel that way too. And we'll keep you up to date on the latest from the kidnapping. Local and federal investigators are working this case right now. And Channel 2's Dave Huddleston is outside the Clarkston Police Department. We're talking with investigators here at the Clarkston Police Department to get new information about the kidnapping of one-year-old Blaze Barnett. Are there any suspects that they're looking at? Are they close to making an arrest? And how did he end up two blocks from the police department in that woman's car? Look for our reports beginning on Channel 2 Action News at 4. Reporting from DeKalb County, Dave Huddleston, Channel 2 Action News. And we know you still have a lot of questions, as so do our reporters as well. We'll alert you to any urgent updates on the WSB TV News app and have everything we learn starting on Channel 2 Action News at 4 o'clock today. The Cobb County School District will keep its accreditation status. The superintendent said last night the special review team gave them some recommendations which they will need to address in the next year. The review started in February after the district received about 50 complaints. Accreditation is important because it helps parents decide where to enroll their kids. It also impacts home prices as well. Severe Weather Team 2 guided you through some rainy conditions for the morning commute. Here's a live look right here at I-285 and Georgia 400. Now we are looking toward the weekend where, yes, the cold weather might visit us. Meteorologist Jennifer Lopez uh, tracking our forecast right now for Friday and the weekend in Severe Weather Center 2. Jennifer. It's all about the temperatures and we're going to watch yes. those numbers really start to drop come tomorrow night. Outside right now, we're seeing nothing but sunshine over the airport. It's a beautiful looking afternoon. The temperature is sitting in the low 60s. Try to get some time to go outside and enjoy this beautiful weather because it is going to be getting much colder tomorrow and the wind will pick up. Today's high should be into the middle to the upper 60s. That's probably the warmest we are going to be for at least the next three to four days. That's right, a big front coming in, and the front right now has a little bit of rain north of Memphis. Now, as it slides into our area, I don't think we're going to see any precipitation from it. But behind it, the air mass is going to drop our temperatures down to the low 30s. And it's going to be pretty close to that freezing mark of 32 here in Atlanta. So starting tomorrow night through Sunday morning, we are going to be watching temperatures fall in the 30s. I'm jumping ahead to 9 o'clock tomorrow night, 42 in Atlanta. But then by 3 in the morning, we're down into the middle 30s in Atlanta. Now, the suburbs are probably going to be to that 32-degree mark by the early part of the morning. And then as we head towards sunrise, we'll have our temperatures still in the 30s. So a cold night in store for us, the coldest of the season so far, coming up on Saturday night. I'm going to tell you, though, how long this cold air is going to last. I'll have your complete forecast for you in a few minutes. Okay, Jennifer, thank you very much. Up again, prices are rising on all sorts of items, especially at the gas stations. So what's causing the hike and when will it end? And on Veterans Day, the moment one fourth grader has been waiting so long for. Let's give her a big round of applause. Oh yeah, we were there for the mother and child reunion. Oh, get the tissues ready, it's beautiful. Plus, COVID cases are leveling off in Georgia, but doctors now say it is not the time to get complacent. Closed captioning, sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm. Clark Money 101, protecting your digital footprint. It's all about keeping you, your family, and your finances safe online. We're tackling your biggest concerns. Scams targeting job seekers. Controlling your personal information. Protecting kids on social media. Everyone can be a victim. Everyone is in danger. Clark Money 101. Protecting your digital footprint. Sunday at 7 on Channel 2. A family to family special. Selling your home can be stressful. But it's